Okay, so here we got two um, HRX 537s. They're 21 inch rotary mowers with hydrostatic drive. Um, they're about eight years old and we use them both for contract mowing in the summer. This one had issues with the hydrostatic drive, um, so I serviced it and repaired it fully. Uh, and it works perfectly. This one is on the way with its hydrostatic, so I thought I'd run a video on how to repair this one. And the nature of the fault is that either the wheels don't turn at all when you put the drive into motion, or you get grinding sounds and it's intermittent. The grinding, by the way, isn't gear cogs grinding against each other, it's air in the um, hydraulic system. We'll look into that later on. To start with um, scraping off all the old crap grass and blowing it away with a leaf blower. So drain the oil like this on the side, it's the only way to do it. The um, reason for that is that you're going to tilt the motor um, 180 degrees from this when you're fixing it and the oil will go into the air filter if you don't do that. Same with the fuel, if you, you need to um, take all the fuel out because when it's 180 degrees the other way the fuel will piss out the fuel um, filler cap. Also take the plug out altogether for safety reasons so you don't lose your fingers obviously. Here's the hydrostatic drive unit here. Um, this is a two or three hour job to get this out and fix it. It's not a ten minute job. Uh, and while we're at it, if you've got no drive at all, it's worth checking that the controls are working properly in the first place before you take everything apart. Now the controls are effectively this orange cable here. And when you pull in this lever, it engages the motor in whatever speed is selected um, previously. And this orange lever just controls the speed. So it's only controlling one cable. Before you start this work, make sure this cable is connected to the other end. It's actually doing something because that may be the nature of your problem. Here's the hydrostatic unit that drives the wheels. You can see the input coming from the engine belt here. This unit's full of oil and the faults related to this are if there's a lack of oil in there, or there's contaminated oil or, or there's air in the system. Any of those three, some of those are the same actually, but any of those three will stop that from working. And the most common culprit is these seals, that rubber seal on the shaft there, same on the other side. They tend to fail and you get a trickle of oil out of here. When you see that, you're more than likely going to know that that's the fault and you need to change these. And changing those is more tricky than you think. Right, next take the blade off. Um, use these impact sockets as opposed to the normal sockets because a good chance you'll round it off if you use those. Make sure it's on there tight. I use a pair of gloves to hold the blades to stop you cutting your hands but you can put a block of wood in there but I think it puts at risk breaking some of the plastic so I do it this way. Generally if you hold the blade it's fairly easy to undo them. Same with the other one. Whip them off with the machine. Mark the right wheel. It's important to do that, you'll see why later on. Take the wheel off. Now these cogs come off with a circlet. You'll need pliers like this to expand them and when you take these off there's lots of washers either side and you need to make sure that the orientation of this remains the same so when you take it off and put it on the bench keep it upright because it's on a ratchet and it goes one way if it's upside down it's not going to work properly so make sure that when you take them off you keep them in the same order okay so take the circlip off often you'll find that the circlip pliers aren't small enough so get a file and file them to the right size and they should fit in the holes properly and then you'll be able to lift the circlip off like that as well as the washer and this cog but be careful because there's a spring under here with a ratchet on it and when you take it off you don't want to lose it there's a woodruff key which forms a ratchet and there's a spring in there which you need to take out there it is, and then the washers 
on the bottom. Now you've got all the component parts for this cog taken off. Take the plastic wheel holder off, which will reveal another circlip and a washer this side. So repeat the procedure to get those off. And then you complete this side, whip the mower over the other way around and do the same to the other wheel. That's both sides done. Remember to keep these cogs in the right orientation. If they're the wrong way around, it'll give you a headache. And then you know which is the right side and which is the left side. Take these semicircular plates off. There's two bolts in here that you don't need to undo because they're not attaching the plates at all. And these things tend to come quite off quite easily. Some of the screws are quite long, which I think is that one. In fact, that one I didn't need to take off, that was a mistake. So we're trying to get this mulching flap off altogether, which is a bit fiddly and there's a little pin inside there that needs to be in the right position and to get that right position this lever needs to be fully in that position and when that's the case it will come Take off. Take this pin out And once you've found it, put it away somewhere safe. This plastic panel needs to come out altogether, which is a 10mm at the top, a sneaky little dowel pin, and a 12mm in there. And with those out, it should, with a bit of luck, come out altogether. The belt's tensioned with a spring on the back of the motor, so to take the tension off the belt, you need to leave with the motor forward, the belt comes loose. And you can take it off. Right, take the spring off the back of the motor, is that easy? Then this control cable that comes off the gearbox, trace it back to the control lever and undo it, but remember the position it's in because you need to put it back into that position later on. Pop the control cable off by pinching these two white things. These little clips will come through the will go through the hole. Like that. And you can remove the cable. So the idea to get this out is that it rotates this way slides down the axle, this pops out here and then you can put it out this way. Now as this is rusty it's going to make it quite a difficult job unless we take its bearing out here and that's taken out with circuit pliers once again and then the adjuster will come off the bottom side then there's much more room to move this around. With the circlip off the adjuster should come out and then there's much more play with the motor so we should be able to rotate the motor and it comes out as easy as that. Right next job clean it within an inch of its life I'll do that in the morning because it's dark and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning welcome to the crack of half past eleven so the unit's out now and nice and clean we've taken the input pulley off um, with a straight nut and a mountain bracket with three bolts, really easy. Let's have a quick look at the unit. Here you can see the seals that will hold the oil inside the unit. It's possible to take these seals out without taking the, the unit apart at all, but in doing so you destroy them by drilling a hole in and using a screw to pull them out. 
and then the new ones you run the risk of damaging them as you slide them over this tube to put them back in here. You also run the risk of damaging the surface of where these seals sit. So I propose to take it apart, clean the shaft properly and then we can insert the new seals in here. Now the principle of operation of this is it's effectively full of oil and there are two chambers, the input chamber and the output chamber. So the input chamber is driven by the engine and the pulley, this bit, and the output chamber drives the wheels. And the amount of oil that transfers between the input chamber and the output chamber is simply the speed at which the unit will rotate its wheels. And the speed can be controlled by this lever here, which goes to the cable we took off earlier. So the input shaft also has a seal on here, but the shaft is upright and is also hidden from the weather with a pulley. So generally um, this doesn't do much work and they normally last a long time so I'm not going to change this one because even if it fails the oil and the gravity is going that way not up that way. So to start with we can take off the filler which is where you put the oil and in here there's a protective membrane, rubber membrane which will prevent dust going in here, it looks like that, and then when we take that off we have access to the oil inside and you can see the oil is at a good level but it's pretty dirty. Take the oil out of it, there are two oil plugs, one on the side and one slightly lower down here so if you leave this to drain it will still leave a lot in the chambers so what I tend to do is spin the motor itself by putting one of the nuts back on and then you'll notice that when you do that much more oil comes out I'll do that a few times when you look at the state of the oil you can see that it looks a little bit metallic and certainly really dirty the oil's out a couple of um, bits of advice when this shaft comes out eventually it can actually fit either way so it's worth just making a note which way around it goes um, I put a little S on there with a scratch and an arrow so now this is the short side when I put it back together the other thing to be really careful of is as far as I'm aware you can't get gaskets so if you can try and protect them if not you'll end up having to make your own okay these four bolts eight millimeter head will allow you to have access to the input chamber and the screwdriver in this bit and the same the other side carefully will open the chamber up without in my case damaging the gasket which is good and take note of the fact that there's a washer here and keep everything in order and put it back and this begins to reveal the mechanism of the pump there's a locating dowel here which needs to be taken out the, the pump itself will come out fairly easily, it's easy to do it on the horizontal otherwise bits fall out and when you do that you should reveal all of the pistons of an actual piston pump the variable displacement. So this is driven by the engine and rotates with the input from this pulley and if a plate located in here remains flat the pump doesn't do anything but when the plate is at an angle called the swash plate and this rotates it begins to pump oil between the input chamber and the output chamber and you can see the swash plate in here and its function against the control cable that comes into it so that controls the speed of the wheels and the more you rotate it the more oil is pumped from this chamber into this chamber the swash plate itself has 
a needle roller bearing as its surface driving the pistons and note that the thick washer goes the piston side and the thin the other side and the bearing in between. Let's take a look at the output chamber. Using a drift or a punch push through this roll pin. Once the control arm for the swash plate is removed you can take the six bolts out and use this flat surface here outside of the gasket itself to prise the two units apart and with a bit of teasing they'll come apart like that. On the swash plate control arm there's an internal oil seal. There's also one as an oil seal ring in this chamber between this chamber and the other chamber. If they're at all damaged replace them. So you can remove the axial piston pump from the output chamber keeping note of the order of these washers because they are quite specific and then in this case the, the pistons have come out but actually it's not too tricky because they're all the same and will fit back into any slot pretty much although I try to keep them in the same ones if I can. So. Now the swash plate on the output chamber is fixed, so there's no adjustment on it, it's just always a constant pump. But the amount of oil that comes into it is determined by the swash plate on the input side. Again there's a bearing surface with needle roller bearings and three bearings in there as well to take out in the right order. It's now a bit awkward because this shaft won't go out that way because it's covered in rust and a bit too thick to go through the seal. So we can clear this rust off nice and easy now hopefully by using a drill to rotate it and a bit of sandpaper to clean it up. A clean shaft should find a little slide all the way out and we have clear access to the seals both sides now and now it's time for a thorough clean. Here are all of the component parts and nice and clean. Here are the new seals, I'll give you the part numbers. There's also the large uh, clip and small uh, clip part numbers if you've uh, damaged them and want to replace them. The um, seal itself comes out really simply just by prying it with a screwdriver. Clean the surfaces. Push. New one into place. Same for the other seal. Right, let's put it back together. Shaft back in, making sure you put the little groove in the right place when it goes in, like that. Bearings in, in the right order, thick one on the outside, on the swash plate. Pistons and actual motor, fit it on the spline, two washers, plate, two dowel pins, remember that washer goes on there, two dowel pins, one, two. 
I'm going to use a minimum amount of this uh, gasket material, gasket sealant, on here um, and on the other chamber when I put it back together. Um, what I'm not going to do is clear off all the residue from the gasket that's already there because I want it to mate with the one that's in existence. So I'm just going to put a small tiny bead along the outside, as small as possible because you don't want any contaminant inside. So I'm just going to use the minimum amount. Right, let's fill it full of oil. Some say 20W50 motor oil, some say 10W30. I'm using 1040. Um, synthetic oil looks a bit like this from a motorbike. It's worked in loads of, of these historically and it's fairly cheap so I'm using that. Um, I'm going to do one fill which is a flush. Um, so I'll fill it up, flush it, empty it and then fill it up for good. And Fill mechanism is through the top. Now it won't fill unless you rotate it fully uh, and then fill it again, rotate it, fill it again and eventually it will fill. So I'll need to rotate the motor and then it begins to circulate the oil around the system. Again. Again. Take the plugs out, flush it through again. Put the plugs back in. Right, so second fill, fill it, run it, fill it, run it. You'll see the bubbles coming out the top. And when you run it, you need to move the control arm so all the pumps are working. You can see the bubbles coming out now. There's much just smaller ones. But keep doing that until the bubbles stop which is about another two or three minutes worth of, of work and fill the oil up to about this level because it will come out through the overflow around the outside and trickle out anyway but um, it's about the right level here Good. 